Welcome to the All Nations Church of God in Christ. We want to welcome you to worship, to lift your hands, to exalt the King. He's worthy of the glory. He's worthy of the honor. He's an amazing God. There's nobody like him. Come on, just lift your hands and worship him. Just lift your hands and exalt the King. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh. worthy God. No one compares to you. No one compares to you. You worthy. There's nobody like you. Nowhere, nowhere. There's nobody like you. Nowhere. There's nobody like you. Nowhere, nowhere. So we lift your name up. We lift your name up. No one compares, no one compares to you. No one compares to you, Lord. No one compares to you. You're amazing. You're amazing. No one compares to you. No one compares to you. No one compares to you. You're amazing. You're amazing and no one compares. Wherever you are, just say no one compares to you. No one compares to you. No one compares. Say you're amazing. You're amazing. You're amazing. You're amazing. You're amazing. Say no one compares. No one compares to you. You're the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. No one compares to you. Say no one compares. No one compares to you. We say you're amazing. You're amazing. You're amazing. You're amazing. Now wherever you are, just put your hands together. Just lift your hands up. We worship an amazing God who was able to do exceedingly abundantly and above all that we can ask or think. He's worthy of all the glory. And as we start this service off, we want to say a prayer to him because he's worthy and he's amazing. Lord, thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for starting us on our way. God, you didn't have to do it. You gave us breath in our body and we're thankful, God. We're thankful for the breath that you gave. We're thankful for the life that you gave, oh God. You're worthy of all the glory. God, we thankful that you let us be able to see this service, oh God. God, we thank, we're thankful that we're able to worship you in all of your ways. You're mighty, God. You're strong, God. You're awesome, oh God. And we thank you, oh God. You're, you're amazing, oh God. And we're thankful. We're thankful for you. We're thankful for you dying on the cross for us. We thank, we're thankful for your blood, oh God. We thank you because you didn't have to do it, but you did. You died on a cross just for our sins. You loved us just because you died, oh God, and we're thankful. We're thankful that you woke us up this morning. We're thankful that you gave us another day, another day of life, another day of breath. And God, we praise you. We'll forever give your name the praise and the honor and the glory. In your name, the praise is due. Amen. Wherever y'all just put your hands together like this. I wanna clap 
up a little louder than before. I want to sing a little louder than before. I want to spin wider than before. If you free, then sing this song with me. Say freedom. 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 Oh. the devil know that you can't take me no more. I'm free. In the name of Jesus, you're free. You're free, yeah. Oh. No more 
more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. I am free. Yeah. Help me say, no more shackles, no more chains, no more, no more bondage. I am free. Say no more shackles, no more shackles, no, no more, more chains, no more, no more I am free. Yeah. Now let's dance the dance of victory. Hallelujah! 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 What's the highest praise? Hallelujah! What's the highest praise? Hallelujah! 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 the Lord I'm free no longer bound no more chains holding me my soul is resting it's just a blessing yeah. praise the Lord hallelujah I'm free can I say it again I am free oh praise the Lord I'm free no longer bound no more chains holding me. My soul is resting. And it's just a blessing. Say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He's worthy of the praise. Praise the Lord. He's worthy of the honor. Praise the Lord. 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 He's worthy of the glory. He's worthy of the honor. He's worthy of the praise. Now right here, just give him the praise. Give him the best praise you have. He's kept you this far. He's worthy of all the glory. He kept you. So praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He's worthy of the glory. Praise the Lord. He's worthy of the honor. Praise the Lord. Give him your best praise. Praise the Lord. Give him your best praise. Praise the Lord. What's the highest praise? Praise the Lord. Highest praise, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The highest praise, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So praise the Lord. Now, if you're free, just give God a praise. Give God a praise of thanks. Thank you for setting me free, God. Thank you for setting me free, God. I could have backtracked, but God, you set me free. I could have been stuck in my mess, but God, you set me free. God, you set me free. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am free. Hallelujah. Hey, hey. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. Hey, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you're free on today, just lift those hands and say, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am. I'm free. So whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Praise. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've been I'm set free. free. I've been delivered from the hand of the enemy. Praise. Praise. Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We've got the victory. We've got the victory. We've got the victory. 
we got the victory. Praise, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. With every hallelujah and every thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. We'll lift it up to the Lord because He set us free. Praise the Lord. 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 I give you glory, God. I give you honor, God. Hey, I bless your holy name. That's do your name, oh God. We magnify you. We glorify you. We exalt you. We adore you. We lift your name higher. We glorify you. If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, we'd be in a messed up place. But we praise the Lord. We give Him glory. We give Him thanks. We give Him adoration. We give Him adore. He's worthy. He's worthy. With our hands lifted up and our hearts filled with praise. Our hands are lifted up. Our heart is filled with praise. praise we magnify Him. We glorify Him. We exalt God. Hallelujah. We thank you for freedom. We thank you for freedom. No longer pound. No longer pound. No more chains holding us up. No more chains holding us up. Thank God I'm free. If you're free, come on, lift those hands and thank him. If you've been set free, glorify him. Magnify him. Yes, yeah, some of us used to be this. Some of us used to be that. But God... He delivered us, and he, he delivered us. He set us free, and he gave us the victory. If you know that you've been set free, and that your God has given you the victory, I tell you to open up your mouth in your living room, in your bedroom, and begin to praise him, begin to glorify him, begin to honor him. Thank God that I'm not where I used to be. Thank God. I'm not in the place I used to be. Thank God he changed me. Thank God he removed me out of the sin and sin, sin and shame. Tried to hold me down, but God's love, it lifted me. God's hand reached down, picked me up, turned me around. That's why I praise him. That's why I thank him. That's why I glorify him. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If God has set you free, if God has delivered you, if he redeemed your soul, give God a praise. I feel, I feel, I feel the glory of God. Hey! Some of you ought to just shake yourself. Get the chains off of you. You're not bound any longer. You're not locked up any longer. Shake the chains off. Shake depression off. Shake loneliness off. Shake high blood pressure off. Shake it off. Shake it off. You've been set free. You've been delivered. God did it again. Well, it's, well, it's too early to praise God and have church. But I feel a praise on the inside. Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and what he did on Calvary, he bled 
and he died so that I can be free. I've got to praise him. You ought to just type in there, I'm free, I'm free. I'm free. Yeah, I'm free. No more bound, no longer chains holding me. I'm free. And when you're free, you can dance. Mary, Mary says, take the shackles off me so I can dance. Some of you got some shackles on you, but you can dance now. Why? Because he set me free. Type in there, he set me free. <laughs> Y'all didn't come to praise him. Y'all didn't log in to give him glory. But you ought to thank God for the freedom that he's given you. He set me free. Or you ought to take about 20 seconds right there and give God some praise. Put those sanctified hands together and begin to bless him. Begin to glorify him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hey. Oh, let the redeemed of the Lord say so right here. Give God some praise. I know you're in your bedroom. I know you're in your living room. You might be in the kitchen cooking right now. But I dare you just to pause and give him a praise. This is a pause and praise moment. When you pause, you start thinking. And then you'll start praising. Because he's been so good. He's been so kind. He's been so good to us. And I gotta thank him. Hey, glory, glory. Hey, glory, 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 glory. Come on, 15 more seconds. Listen, say with me, the devil is defeated. God is exhorted. Is the devil is defeated. The devil is defeated. And God is exalted. God is exalted. The devil is defeated. The devil is defeated. God is exalted. God is exalted. The devil is defeated. The devil is defeated. And God is exalted. God is exalted. The devil is defeated. 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 God is exalted. 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 The devil is defeated. 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 God is in charge. God is in charge. God is in charge. God is exalted. God is exalted. God is exalted. God is exalted. 
are some battles that you should have lost. But when you turned around, God gave you the victory. The devil is defeated. And God will be exalted. God's going to get the glory out of it. It looks like defeat. But it's only a part of your destiny. It looks like it's over. But God said, I'm just getting started. I dare you to put those hands together. We are about to move. But there's a praise. When you praise him for where you're at now, he'll make room for you in some other area. Everybody dance out. You want to let your feet testify just for a few more seconds uh, that God's been just that good. I tell you, if you're sick in your body, start waving your hand. Open up your mouth. Uh, and by the time you finish praising them, healing's going to hit your room. Deliverance gonna hit your house. Got one again. 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 I am free. I am free. to back unto God. Give God a holler. Give God a praise. Open up your mouth. Oh Zion, open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. Don't sit silent. Don't be quiet. Open up your mouth and give God a praise. Give God glory. Give God honor. That's to his name. Hey! Hey! Hey. 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 Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Oh. Bless your name, God. Bless your name, God. Oh. We got a 
a movement. I feel the glory. 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 He's in your room. He's in your dwelling place. I tell you to lift up those hands. Put your head back. Open up your mouth and shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Hey. Well, we better move. Ah, uh, because I feel a Holy Ghost takeover. Y'all hold on. Hey, shut up, man. The old shut up. Y'all act like it's already Pentecost Sunday. Oh. But the Holy Ghost is here right now. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is here right now. Holy and God. whatever you need, whatever you need, God's got it. God's got it. All right. He's got it, he's got it, he's got it. <laughs> he's got it, he's got it, he's got it. He's got it, he's got it, he's got it. All you gotta do is reach up and grab it. God's got it. Reach up and grab. God's My faith it. tells me I can have it. My faith decrees I can have it. Reach up and grab. Hey, hey, hey. Oh. Glory, 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 just lift those hands, hallelujah, glory to God, lift those hands in your house, in your bedroom, some of you may be logged in from your job, oh but the glory of the Lord is there, the presence of the Lord is there, how do I know, because the Bible tells me that he dwells in the praises of his people. And when you praise him, he comes to wherever you're at. Oh, 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 oh. hey, it's what I do. Just said we're going to move up. Hey, hey, uh, praise is what I do. hands and say praise is what I do it's what I do it's what I do it's what I do with uplifted hands praise is who I am yeah praise is who I am One more time. Yeah. If that's who you are, praise is who I am. Praise is who I am. Praise is who I am. We thank you for tuning in to the All Nations Church of God in Christ, 503 South Water Street. No place like this place, nowhere near this place. This must be the place uh, where the glory of the Lord is uh, and the people of God love God and his people. We came to worship God, magnify him, and adore him this afternoon. Uh, we didn't just, uh, just put our clothes on to come and look at a monitor or a screen, but we came to magnify, glorify, and extol the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Uh, he is marvelous. He is excellent, and he is great and worthy of all the praise. Hallelujah. We bless his holy name in this temple. We glorify him in this place because there is nobody like our God. Just worship him. Continue to worship him. We want to continue to pray for the sick and shut in, those who are still in the hospital, nursing homes. Uh, we know that God is still the healer and that he will heal every sin, sick soul and disease because he's God just like that. We're thankful for his goodness and his mercy. 
Ah, for he's forever shining on us. We bless God, amen, for another day that he's kept us, watched over us, and protected us. Let's continue to lift up the Harris family in the passing of Brother Darwin Harris, a man who was a life member of the All Nations Church of God in Christ, a man, a musician in the house of God that played unto God, a man. And we thank God for his life and the legacy that continues to go forth. So we're praying for his children. We're praying for his siblings, his cousins, his nieces, all of the individuals who have been affected by the passing of this great man of God. We ask that you lift them up in prayer. In your moment time, just his, whisper their name in prayer because we know that God gives you comfort and his comfort is like no other comfort. So we bless God for his life and will forever Remember him. As the week comes, we will give you further information regarding arrangements and let you know a little bit more details as they come in. But we thank God and celebrate the man of God. Amen. I want to wish happy birthday to Sister Robin Clerk. Amen. Lifelong member of All Nations Church. Amen. She's not here physically in Illinois, but she's still a member here. Amen. And we thank God for her, and we want to wish her a happy birthday that God gives her many, many more. To all of those who celebrated birthdays on this month, happy birthday. And to our graduates, we say congratulations. Amen. We're going to do some other things for the graduates here at All Nations. Amen. To honor and to give God praise for your great achievement that you have accomplished throughout the past several years, and it is due honor, recognition, and praise. So we're thankful for being here. Thank God for these wonderful musicians that have been laboring in the gospel with us for the past several weeks. Amen. We thank God for the speedy recovery of uh, our musicians that have been out. We know that God is healing and touching their bodies, and we thank God for them. I just want to thank God for the administrative staff that have been diligently working to ensure that the work of all nations continues to go forth. Amen. Sister Nicole Jackson, amen. Sister Helen Hems, Sister Kathy Wells, Sister Tempe Bates have been working behind the scenes. Sister Angie Ross, amen. And we have some new committees that are forming and God is doing a great work in the ministry. Thank you for your continuous contributions and labor of love. I'm not going to preach, amen, my, probably my full sermon today. Uh, I'll probably cut through some corners here on today and I pray that you just get the full, the blush of what uh, the Lord laid upon my heart to share with the people on today. Um, let's go quickly to 2 Kings. I'm still in the book of Kings. We transitioned from 1 Kings talking about Elijah, and we're now talking about Elijah, Elisha, S-H-A. Amen. And we're going to finish, amen, a message dealing with Elisha and the miracles that God wrought through the hand of this prophet on today. Amen. We hope and pray that you are having a safe holiday weekend. Amen. Some of you have been on holiday weekend for the past couple of months. Amen. But those who are still working and able to enjoy a day off, may God strengthen you in your day off. Amen. Second Kings chapter 6. Second Kings chapter 6. Amen. I'm reading from the New International Version. Amen. I want to thank God for the praise team that has been laboring. Amen. On the past several weeks as well. Amen. God bless and strengthen each and every one of them in their bodies. Amen. Verse 1, the company of the prophets said to uh, Elisha, look, the place where we meet with the, you is too small for us. Let us go to the Jordan where each of us can get a pole and let us build a place there for us to meet. And he said, go. Then one of them said, won't you please come with your servants? I will. Elisha said and replied, and he went with them. They went to the Jordan and began to cut down trees. They began to cut wood to prepare for the new place. As one of them was cutting down a tree, the iron axe head fell into the water. He said, oh no, my Lord, he cried. It was borrowed. It didn't belong to me. The man of God asked, where did it fall? When he showed him the place, oh, Elisha cut a stick and threw it there and made the iron float. Lift it out, he said. Then the man reached out his hand and he took it. Today, I, I want to talk for a few moments uh, on the topic, don't lose your head. Uh, get your power back. Don't lose your head. Get your power back. Hashtag get your power back. Man, 
Amen. Don't lose your head. Now, last week I told you to get out of here, but you can't lose your head when you get out of it. Amen. You got to have a sound mind in this day and time. And we're living in a time where people are losing their mind, losing their ability to think straight and make the right decisions and do what they need to do that is sound and that will bring them to a place of victory. Um, but I want to talk just for a few minutes on don't lose your head. God, this is your word and this is for your people. We ask that the word be spoken to lift the hearts of men and women, that someone may hear it. Ask what must I do to be saved. Send deliverance, send healing, and set the captive free. These and all blessings we do ask in your son Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. The Bible does not uh, record uh, how long the prophets had been in that location. But they reached a place where they felt that the walls uh -huh, closing on them, they were feeling claustrophobic, uh, uncomfortable. They felt it was time to expand. Uh huh. So in life, we grow into some things and we grow out of some things. Uh, let me say that again. We grow into some things and we grow out of some things. Uh, when I was a young boy, my mother used to uh, take us to the store and she would buy me a pair of gym shoes, but she would buy the shoes about a half size to a size bigger uh, because she knew that my feet were still growing and she wanted to make sure that I grew into the shoe. And so she would make sure that the size would be a little bit bigger so I had room to grow into the shoe. But then there came a time that uh, that room, that extra room was no longer available and I needed a new pair of shoes because I had now grew out of the shoe. Uh -huh. So there are times when you grow into some stuff and then there's some times when you grow out of some stuff. So here it is, uh, they had grew out of the place that they were in. So some of us at times, we get stuck in the environment that is too small for us because we refuse to change. Uh, refuse to let go of what is familiar and comfortable, even though it's causing us grief and pain. Uh, some of you need to reevaluate your friends and circle because you're trying to take some people to a place uh, that's bigger than them that they cannot survive in. Uh, so you hang around low living, lukewarm, uh, cold people who will hold you back from the growth that God has planned for your life. So you got to learn how to be able to grow out of the place you're in and move to a bigger location. Uh, so let's, if we look at here, there's a plant. Uh, if we look at a plant, the roots of a plant grow, and as they're growing in the pot, you start out initially putting it in a small pot, but as the plant grows, there's a growth process that takes place while the plant is trying to mature. Household needs to occasionally replant uh, for a variety of reasons, uh, to all basically make sure that the plant remains healthy. Uh, the reprotting process allows you to give the plant more suitable growing environment with additional space so that the soil can get its proper nutrients. Understanding the benefit helps you to determine if and when you need to repot. A common reason for repotting is giving the plant larger room to grow, gives it a bigger space. So house plants eventually grow or outgrow their containers, mm -hmm. causing the roots to become crowded and complicated, uh, compacted, excuse me. Without enough space for the roots, the plant often experiences stunted growth because they become so compacted together, they can no longer spread and grow any longer. So they become constrained and crowded and compacted without enough room to grow. Some of you are constrained, compacted, and you've been crowded for too long. Signs that a plant has outgrown the container include roots growing through the drainage holes or above the soil. Huh, what happens is you start to expose stuff that God is not ready for you to expose. Things are being seen that don't need to be seen in your life because your roots begin to be seen on the soil. Some of you have crowded or outcrowded the space that you're in and now we are seeing stuff that God never intended folks to see about you. Uh-huh. So that what happens is it's an indication that you need to be repotted. You need to move. You need to go to a larger 
place. The term root bound means that the roots or the plants have completely taken up space within the pot that contains it, often circling and creating a dense web of roots. This can form a compacted hard ball that will slide out of the pot in a mass, retaining the shape of the pot. If you don't remove it, it will cause more damage to the livelihood of the plant. So the tangled up knot of roots can stress the plant and deprive it from nutrients, air, and water. Some of you are in a stressful place right now in your life because you have allowed yourself to become compacted and restrained. You've been restricted because you've outgrown the place that you've been in your life. It's time to grow up. Somebody say it's time to grow up. So here, moving the plant to the next size container allows the roots to spread while enabling the plant to grow larger. The reason you're not bigger than where you're supposed to be, the reason why you have not moved into a higher place in your life is because you've refused to move locations. You've chosen to stay in the place that you're in because it's comfortable. But in order to get greater, you got to learn how to take some risks. You got to learn how to walk out on faith and trust God to do greater works in your life. What I'm saying, some of you have outgrown the place. You are in and you are suffocating yourself. When you deprive yourself of air, you will eventually die. When you can no longer receive water and nourishment needed to survive, you will die. Why remain in a place that will eventually kill you when you can choose to move to a space that will better accommodate you? I just came to tell you it's time to enlarge your territory. Uh-huh, type in there, enlarge your territory. God is trying to increase your capacity, but you become comfortable in the place you've been in for several years. It's either move or lose. Uh-huh, tell somebody either move or lose. In order to grow, you got to go. Ha, ah, thank you, Jesus. In order to grow, you've got to go. Some of you want to stay, but I'm here to tell you that if you want to grow, you got to go. It's imperative that you remove yourself from the place of complacency and comfortability and go to the place called change. Too many times we don't like change because change will challenge you in abilities that you seemingly feel like you don't have. Change will cause you to bring out attributes that are inside of you that God can be able to begin to cultivate and nourish. You've got to come out of complacency and comfortability and move to the place of change. Uh, I have to keep moving, but I want to pause for a moment here and I want to look at chapter verse 3. The need to make sure that you have the right people with you when you're moving. Mm -hmm. huh, one of them said to the, the prophet, he said to him, he says, uh, will you go with us? And the prophet replied, I will go. It's imperative that in this season of your life that you understand that you have the right people that are critical to your success that are joined to you when you move in this season. Because these are the people that are going to help nourish you and put you in the place that God has destined for you to be. They did not know for sure how this was going to work out. But one of them was smart enough to say, we better bring the prophet along with us. And the Bible says that the prophet obliged them and went with with them. Now the Bible tells us that they went to Jordan and began to cut down the wood. Mm -hmm. They began to work to build their new dwelling place. When you want growth, you have to work for it. Uh, I, I, I may not get any amens on that, but I'm going to say it again. When you want growth, you have to work for it. People want a better life, but they don't want to work for it. They don't want to put the work in to, be, to obtain a better life. Uh, I hear people say, I want to be healthy, but keep eating fried foods and cakes and pies. I want to go to college and get a degree, but won't even fill the, uh, the registration online. 
Oh, people say, I want a better relationship with my spouse and children, but won't take out the time to cultivate and nur nurture a relationship. Matter of fact, won't even speak to them, but you want a better relationship. I want a better relationship with God, but you don't pray, you don't read your Bible, but you don't want, but you want a better relationship. I want a better wealth, but you won't even take time to build a budget or put the right tools in place to make sure you have a spending plan, but I want better. If you want better, you got to work for better. I'm going to say it again. If you want better, you got to work for better. Uh, fulfilling your want is predicated on how much work you are willing to put in. I'm going to say it again. Fulfilling your wants is all predicated on how much work you are willing to put in. Now, the Bible didn't say that God told them to build. They felt the need that they needed a bigger space. There are times that you don't have to say, well, God told me. No, sometimes you got some things that you desire and you want in life. But in order to get those things, you have to put some work in. We want God to do all the work while we sit down and do nothing. But I'm here to tell you, you've got to participate in your deliverance. You've got to participate in your miracle. You've got to participate in your breakthrough. Tell somebody, you've got to participate. While they are busy working, one of the young prophets loses his axe head, and one of the young prophets recognizes that he loses, he lost his power. His actions were not producing any results any longer. His actions were no longer producing any results. He recognized that he was swinging, but nothing was happening. Some of you are swinging your axe, but nothing is happening. Uh-huh. Singing, shouting, but nothing is happening. Praying, dancing, but nothing is happening. Speaking in tongues, but nothing is happening. Could it be that we've lost our head? Could it be that we've lost our power, our strength to cause and make things happen in our life? He recognized that he was swinging, but nothing was happening. Now, this young prophet acknowledged something was wrong. He acknowledged that he had no longer had the power, but not only that, but that power that he had was borrowed. Mm -hmm. It was something that didn't even belong to him. He recognized that his ability and his power to work effectively came from another source. Our power comes from another source, uh-huh. We can't do this thing on our own. It need, we need the help of God. That power source is the Holy Ghost. It's the anointing of the Holy Ghost that still destroys yokes. It's the anointing that heals sick bodies. It's the anointing that restores marriages and broken families. It's the anointing that drives the devil out. It's the anointing that sets the captives free. It's the anointing that causes the lame to walk, the dumb to talk, the blind to see. It takes the anointing. Uh, we have to have the power of the Holy Ghost in order to function effectively in the kingdom of God. The young man stopped swinging. And when he stopped swinging and recognized that he lost his power, he knew he needed to get some help. Mm -hmm. Stop trying to do it on your own and recognize when you need help. Some of you have been trying to do all of this by yourself, but there comes a time in life that you're going to need some help. And so he recognized he lost his power and that he needed help. And so the Bible says that he goes and he looks for the prophet. Ah, it's a sad thing to be working but not producing. It's a sad thing to be swinging and be unsuccessful. Still, but nothing is happening. Going through the motions, keeping it up an appearance, putting on a good show, looking the part, shouting when it's time to shout, clapping your hands when it's time to clap, laughing when it's time to laugh. Ah, you will even speak in tongues when it's, you feel like the Spirit has given you the utterance to do so, but still have no power. I came to tell you, just like it happened on last night, here at the church, there was a storm that came. And when the storm came, it blew the winds, it blew the trees, caused tree limbs and branches to fall on power lines. And it caused a disruption in our service if there was a power outage. Uh-huh. 
Some of you are experiencing a power outage in your life. Some of you have lost your power. Some storm has come. Some trial or some tribulation has hit your house and caused a power outage. And you need God to restore your power. Some of you need to get on the line with Jesus. You've been calling calm air, but I'm here to tell you that this is a God problem. You've been trying to call the electrical company, but I'm here to tell you it's time to call God. Let me slow down because I'm getting a little happy. I feel my help coming but I want to get through this. So here, there was a power outage that had taken place in this man's life. Just like many of you, uh, uh, you're in this place where there is a power outage. And so he tells him, he says, show me the place where you lost it. Show me where you lost your power. When, my question is to you, uh, when did you start just going through the motions? When did you just become dull and have become numb? When did your prayer become just a requirement and a duty? When did it come to the place that you stopped doing the work that God assigned to your hand? When did you stop serving the people that God told you to serve? When did you stop having the joy? When did you stop having peace of mind? Where did you lose your power? Ah, uh, did it happen when somebody lied on you? Mm -hmm. uh, did it happen when somebody overlooked you on the program? Uh, did it happen because you got caught up in other busy work and you didn't recognize that you were losing your power? It's a dangerous thing uh, uh, to work and not watch. Let me say that again. It's a dangerous thing to work and not watch. The Bible tells us to watch and pray. Nehemiah had set some watchers, and he set some workers because in chapter 4 of Nehemiah, he did it because the enemy had came to frustrate the plan of God. He came because they didn't want them to no longer build. So Tobias and Sinbar and Arabas, they came, and they came to frustrate the rebuilding of Jerusalem. So what they did, they tried to stop them. But Nehemiah said, wait a minute, what we're going to do is we're going to get some workers and we're going to get some watches. Mm -hmm. you got to watch what you're doing while you're working. Because somewhere along the line, I believe that we'll keep working. And we won't recognize that we're doing a lot of work, but we're not getting anything done. That's why you got to watch what's happening. Once he realized that the axe head had failed, he had to change what was going on. So you've got to watch while you work. Ah, so somewhere along the line, we have lost our zeal for God. We've lost our enthusiastic astic, uh, our disposition that we had when we first got saved. Where did you lose it? It's my question on today. Uh, was it when you worked so hard and didn't get any credit? Uh, is it because you deserted your devotion time that you used to pray when you got up in the morning? You used to call on the name of Jesus. Where did you lose it? Where did you lose your hunger for God? Where did you lose your passion for him? Where did you lose your zeal and the love for the things of God? I just came to tell somebody today, you've got to get your power back. You've got to get your power restored. That are some things that you have said to yourself that you said you would never see happen or come to pass. But I came to prophesy to you on today that God is going to bring back He's going to bring it to your past. He's going to bring it to fruition. He's going to cause it to happen in your life. You've got to speak and prophesy over your own life and say, it's coming back. It will happen. It will take place. There is a ministry that looked like it was dead, but I'm here to tell you it's about to resurface. There's some stuff, uh, some business plans that you thought was over, but I'm here to tell you it's about to begin to float again. That means you're about to see the stuff that God has told you that I'll bring it to pass because he said he'll give you the desires of your heart. God will give you what you ask for according to the will of God. All you got to do is learn how to tell God, I need my stuff. Get your joy back. Get your peace back. Get your happiness back. It's about to come back. Some of you are about to get restoration in your life and in this season. But you've got to ask God. 
The man of God went and he asked the prophet, I need your help. So the Bible says, because I'm out of time, the Bible says that the prophet comes. He throws, he takes a stick and he throws the stick in the water. And when he throws the stick in the water, the iron begins to float. So iron doesn't float, somebody. But when God is in the middle of this situation. God will cause things to happen that seemingly that could not and should not be happening. God will begin to change some things in your life as long as you follow the plan of God. So here the Bible says Elisha told him, Elijah told him, he said, young man, go ahead, put forth your hand and pick up the iron head. Go back and get your power because it has just resurfaced. Three things you got to do and I'm done. Three things you got to do in order to make sure that you don't lose your power. You got to make sure that when you get to that place when you lost something, you got to acknowledge first. The man acknowledged that he had lost his power. Then you got to learn how to ask. You got to ask for some help. And after you get done asking, then you got to apprehend. That means take possession of. He had to now take possession of his power. He acknowledged, he asked, and then he apprehended Comprehended what God gave back to him. Some of you are in a place where you're wondering, when is it coming back? I'm here to tell you that it's getting ready to resurface. Get your hand ready. Get ready to grab hold of what God has already brought back to life. Some of you thought that it was over. Some of you thought that it was going to come to an end. But I'm here to tell you, you're about to get your power back. God's about to restore you. God's about to make whole some things that seem to be broken. Some things that seem to be in distress. Get ready for your deliverance. Get ready for your healing. Get ready for your breakthrough. Because restoration is about to hit your house. I'm not going to preach. Acknowledge, ask, and apprehend. Knowledge, ask, and apprehend. Take back. But in order to do so, you can't lose your head. That means don't lose your mind in this season. Because if you lose your head, that's your thinking source. That's your control system. That's the place where the enemy wants to operate in your life. And if he can cause you to lose your head, he's got the rest of your body. That means he causes you to stop doing the work. You got a dead body that becomes useless for nothing. But when you get your head on straight and you start thinking straight, you get your power back. Where did you lose your power? Where did you lose your strength? You got to go back and acknowledge the place. Some of you have been hurt in some places and areas of your life that you no longer have the joy that you used to have because you've been hurt. And you've allowed yourself to get out of church, stop working, stop doing the business of God because of the hurt and the pain. But I need you to go back to that place and ask God to give you the strength to deal with the situation so that the stuff in your life can come to surface and you can grab your power back, grab your strength back, grab the stuff that's been trying to get you to the next place because God wants you to enlarge your territory. You should have had some stuff built in your life a long time ago, but you lost your power. You lost your ability to work effectively. You've been working, but getting no results because you've lost your power. I'm here to tell you that God will give you your power back, and all you got to do is ask him for it. Hallelujah. You are my strength, strength like no other. Some of you need your strength back right now. You need your power back, and God is the source of your strength, and he is the strength of your life. Just lift your hands wherever you may be and say, God, restore my strength. Restore my power. Restore my joy. Restore unto me all the things that the enemy has seemingly robbed and ripped away from me. God, I speak strength. I speak joy. I speak peace into the minds and the hearts of your people everywhere. In the name of Jesus.
You are my strength. You are my strength. Oh, oh, oh. strength like no other. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Reaches. Reaches to me. One more time. You are my strength. You are my strength. Tell God I need your strength. God, I need your strength. Strength like no other. If you're under the sound of my voice and you don't know Jesus strength Christ in a part of your like sin, no I speak strength into your life Reaches to give your life over to him right now. Me. It's as easy as ABC except believe you are and confess. Say, Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me of my sins. Wash me. Cleanse me. Make me new. Created me a clean heart and renewing me the right spirit. Wash me and make me new. I believe you died for my sins and you rose again on the third day and I am saved. If you said that prayer, you are now saved and your name has now just been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Get to an online ministry somewhere. Get fed. Continue to read your word and get your life stripped. You've got to work now that you are part of this team because God wants your roots to grow and you've got to get in a space where you can grow and not suffocate and God will give you the strength to build the blessings that he has predestined for your life you lift me up thank you for tuning in to the All Nations Church of God in Christ you lift me up we have our Helping Hands ministry that continues to provide assistance during this pandemic. Contact Sister Sandra Ross at 779-233-1174. 779-233-1174. This is to contact our Helping Hands that provides grocery shopping, gas fill-ups, prescription and minor essential errands to be ran. You are my strength. Ways to pay your tithes and give seed offering like we do no the principle of tithing of 10 percent but we are grace givers strength and we give according like to the no grace that god has given us so we don't limit god to 10 percent the lord may tell you to give 20 30 percent 40 percent 50 percent whatever god you speaks to your spirit because he's given us so much we owe him everything strength nothing belongs to us no everything other. belongs to god so we ask and we encourage you to be a grace giver and give according to grace. As you give on the day, you have a few ways to do so. You can do so www.givelify.com. You'll find All Nations Church of God in Christ, white building, red top. Again, www.givelify.com. Or you can do text the word G-I-V-E to 815-605-9100 again 815-605-9100 that's text the word give then you can also go to cash app dollar sign a-l-l-n-a-t-i-o-n-s j-o-l-i-e-t that's all nations joliet dollar sign all nations joliet on our cash app and just simply put in there four tithes, four offerings, whatever you desire. If you want to put in there for the helping hands, you can write in there. Uh, this is for helping hands ministry to continue the outreach work of the ministry. Thank you for being faithful attenders on Facebook Live. We thank you and God bless you. And thank you for continuing to pour and ensure that the ministry continues to go forth. We are blessed because are God has blessed us. And we're thankful for everything. Peace like no peace other. Like no other. He's given us peace like no other. Peace like no other. And it reaches. Reaches to me. You are my hope. You are my hope. Hope like no other. Hope like no other. Hope like no other. Hope like no other. And it reaches, reaches to me in the fullness.
fullness in the fullness in the fullness of your grace in the power of your name God you lift me up yes you do you lift me up you lift me up one more time in the in the in the fullness of your grace and said in the power of your name you lift me Higher and higher, Lord. You lift me up. We're about to go for one last time. You are my strength. You are my strength. Oh, oh, oh. strength. Strength like no other. We pray that you have a safe strength holiday like weekend. No I know many of you want to get with a lot of people and friends Reach and celebrate. But I want to encourage you to think and be wise in your fellowship. You if you strength. must be around people, continue to wear your face mask like and still no continue to practice social distancing other. to prevent and to, in order to like cause no the sickness to not spread. Other. We want to save lives, so we have to be Reach smart in saving lives. So I encourage you to please, please be safe. You Let me say this, break it down a little bit. Um, the All Nations Church of God in Christ will continue to stream He's online like until further notice. Um, some people may be wondering when are we going to open back up when things change as far as governing ordinances may be lifted and restricted. Um, but I always preach and teach in all our ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. And I believe in asking God for wisdom and uh, knowledge to know how to go forth and move forward. So if anything, uh, we won't be ha opening up anytime soon. I'll tell you that now. Um, we're going to wait on God and wait until God speaks for us to come back. But then when we come back, uh, we will have preventative measures in place to ensure that we are continuing to protect the people of God, to ensure safety in the house of God. Uh, no, it's not fear. We're not fearful. We're making sure that we have, the Bible says, not the spirit of fear, but a love and a sound mind. That means he's giving you a common sense. We're using common sense. And we got to use the sound mind that we have. And when you get sound mind, you won't have fear. Uh, when you get sound mind, you won't have to be afraid because he will lead and guide you and what to do and what not to do. So we're thankful uh, that God is allowing the sickness to uh, slowly come to an end. But until then, we are going to still practice safe preventative measures on every hand. So when we reopen, we will let you know. Uh, we will provide uh, some type of notification of information of what's going on. Amen. Thank you so much, God. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forever. We thank him and we bless him. In Jesus' name we pray. You ought to, you ought to, you ought to pray. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him in the morning. Praise him in the morning. Come on. Praise him. Praise him when the sun goes down. You ought to praise him. Praise him. Praise him in the morning. Praise him in the new day. Everybody praise him. Praise him. Praise him when the sun goes down. You ought to serve him. Serve him. Serve him in the morning, serve him in the new day, serve him. Everybody serve, serve him. him, serve him when the sun goes down. Come on, let's love him, love him, oh, love, love him, him in the morning, love him in the new day. Everybody love, love him. him, love him, love him when the sun goes down. Everybody praise him. Praise him. Praise him in the morning. Praise him in the noon. Come on, let's praise him. Everybody praise him. Oh, praise him.
praise him when the sun goes down. His name is Jesus. Jesus. Jesus in the morning. Jesus in the noon. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus when the sun goes down. You ought to praise him. Praise him. Praise him in the morning. Praise him in the new day. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him when the sun goes down. You ought to love him. Love him. Love him in the morning. Love him in the new day. Love him. Love him. Love him when the sun down. You ought to praise him. Praise him. Praise him in the morning. Praise him in the new day. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him when the sun goes down. 